Now, tonight I will be playing Oros. Show off the box real quick. Uh, this is, of course, going to be a prototype copy. But this game is there's a lot going on with it. It's really unique. Uh, it's probably easiest if I just read off the description of it, because it's so special. Oros is a tile colliding, volcano erupting, mountain making, wisdom gathering, action economy strategy game. So this is a one to four player game. That takes about five minutes or so to set up. There's a lot of tiles and little pieces for each player. Not hard to do at all. Very straightforward. Playtime says about 30 minutes per player. Now, of course, a learning game is going to take a little bit longer. But once you get the concept, which is very fast to get the concept, the layered strategy within the game gives you a lot of depth and variability and a lot of chances to do what you want to do or change it up as you move along. Recommended ages about 14 and up, which I can easily see why there is a, a lot to dive into on it. Now, of course, like I said, the concept to play is simple, but the strategy is where it's going to be a little bit more difficult. It has a main game board right here. With pre, uh, I've set it up already. This is the beginning of, of any game, no matter the player count. There's the other side of the board that you can't play at three and four player. I'm going to be showing off the main basic board layout. So that we're going to have tiles of different numbers with extra stacks around the board. We have spaces where single one island start that also have some volcanoes on them. In the middle of the board, we have a four land and some threes. These will build up over time. I need some twos as well. Uh, so we're going to put some corner twos right here to expand this land a little bit. But these will be shifting and moving throughout the whole game. As a solo game, you use two automa, which I've set up right here. So the automas use basically a card deck each. You can basically pick if you're playing against a competitive automa, the friendly one, or there's also a more difficult one you can choose to play against. So this game also has what they call the ziggurat up here, which is, acts basically like a timer as people move up it. Once we get to the peak, it basically triggers the end round. So in, in this game, you're, you're playing as demigods and your followers are helping you perform actions throughout the game. You're gonna start with the baseline of actions throughout the game. You can increase the level of them, allowing you to perform bigger or better actions. Knowledge is the end game points, uh, which is a total of the ziggurat and then depending on where you get on certain parts of your player board. This is essentially a worker placement game, but everyone's placing workers on their own boards, so it ends up blocking some of their own moves. So you have to plan around that. Uh, so some of the actions relate to sh uh, shifting a whole row. Um, rows are columns, rows, and the special thing about this is they translate to the opposite side. So say I was moving something over here, it actually jumps to the opposite side of the board when you're shifting it. Uh, the second action column relates to moving a certain number of tiles. Uh, you start out with like three that are next to each other. You can move sideways this way, or you could also slam them into other tiles, which then adds them in a particular way, which I'll go over in a moment. The third one deals with erupting volcanoes or adding volcanoes to the board. There's also one that allows you to basically send someone to the map or to a study spot either on your board or on the map. And then you can also use that same space to return workers back to your worker spaces from studying to gain the wisdom which you need to increase your abilities. One that we already have covered is going to be journey. This basically allows someone on the board to move around, which you need to kind of move them around because you need someone on a mountain space to build up that space, which brings us to the building of a sacred site. We have monoliths, shrines, and temples, and then building helps you go up the ziggurat and gain extra wisdom to increase your abilities. So to make it easy, I'm just gonna have the automa start. And I have a competitive automa and a friendly automa. And the automas are basically flip a card, and they're gonna have a top, middle, and bottom action. 
you perform them to the greatest ability that's available. The first auto remove card right here. So the top of it talks about a it says C slash A slash D. Basically that's referring to a section of the board. Um, the slashes are basically an or because if you can't perform the first one you go to the second spatial section until you check them all. This one is checking C so the the board right now only for automa is divided between A, B, C, and D portions of the board. So it's wanting to check for A, C, A, and then D. So C, A, then D. In this case, it wants to build the lowest sacred site possible on a mountain tile. There are no mountains out on the board yet, so it's skipping that section. So it's next option, if it can't build, it wants to send a worker to study. Sending a worker to study takes one of its workers. If it had a site on the map, it would send it there first. If not, it has two study spaces. So it's sending it to study. Now the middle part of this is the main part of each card where it's shifting something on the board. In this instance, it's showing an arrow moving a whole row across the map. So anything on that row would try to shift. And in this case, it says shift row two spaces. And that was this row right here. So everything in that row shifts two spaces to the right based on the card. So we're going to go one, two, and then one, two. Now, part of what just happened is that opened up an island space. When island space is left open, after a move, a new island is formed in that space. And then next up, we would check the bottom of the card if there's any additional actions. In this case, there is not. So that would end the Automa's turn. So the next Automa card, we're going to flip over and look at the top of the card, which in this case, it wants to send a worker to study. If it could not, then it would pull two back from studying. So in this case, it does not have anyone studying yet. It will send one worker to go study on its board. Now the middle of this card indicates that the second row would shift to the right, two spaces. There's nothing in that row, so nothing would move in this instance. Now the bottom of this card does show the ziggurat symbol. So in this case, the blue automa is going to advance up the ziggurat. Now this does have reference cards for the Automa symbols, so it's very simple to learn, straightforward, and it's quick for me to reference as I play. They are front and back, so I have the front of one and the back of the other to make it faster to reference the whole thing. So now that both Automas have gone, I will take my first turn. Now the first turn of the game, if you have no workers on the board, then you need to send someone to an island site on the board. I think what I'll do, I will send here to the island next to the B. Now, for the first turn of the game, I now still have two more workers because every turn you have three actions. Straight up three actions. And you could like move a worker to a space, move it and then move it again. But at the beginning you have to place the two workers you don't have on the board yet. I will move Move land tiles one space. Now currently my ability is moving three that are touching each other one space. What I'm going to do is move these three up. So these two have no obstruction, so that's fine. Now this two crashes into the three, acting like two tectonic plates crashing together. So in this instance, land mass is coming together. The, you total it up. The biggest total you can have is a 4, so that becomes a 4, and any extra above 4 becomes Volcano. So in this case, 2 and 3 add to 4, plus it gets a 1 Volcano on it. And then we return these other tiles to their stacks. I'm going to erupt or form Volcanoes with my other action. And you have the option of erupting one volcano or adding plus three volcano onto the map. So what I want to do 
I'm going to take this two volcano and erupt it. So what that does is first, because this is not a four yet, it's at its max. This will fill in this tile as much as possible, creating, adding two to that one, making it a three. Now, when you change a tile's formation or add a new tile to the board, you get to rotate it in the direction that you choose. As long as if a volcano was coming from a different tile, the land's connected but I want this to connect anyway. So I'm going to turn it this way. Now, my person or, or um, follower is still on the tile. Typically you can only have one worker or follower on a tile at a time, um, and that's everyone at the table. So each space can typically only hold one follower unless two masses are crashed together stacked and then anyone on the two of them together uh, both end up on the same one so that was round one then we go back to the Atmos. we'll go over their turns so the top of this one is build the lowest sacred site possible on a mountain tile if there's a mountain in the a space there is not so instead the second option is form one mountain on the lowest numbered map space containing no other land tile and this wants to do it in the A section. So this top right, it's wanting to form a mountain. Now, the extra symbol on it is it also wants to build a sacred site on that mountain. So the A section is this right here. So the A's and, A's and B's, B's and C's, they do have some overlap in the corners, but right now we have A one through nine the lowest numbered A space without a mountain is going to be A2, right there. Now, the second part of that action was to build a sacred site. There are three types of sacred sites, as we mentioned. There are monoliths, which are these V-shaped ones. They are the lowest. They always get built first. After those are built, then the shrines can be built that are too wide on top of shrines, temples can be built. The key is only three sites can be built on each mountain, one of each type, and each player can only have one of each type, or actually one total. So each player can have one total sacred site per mountain. So in this case, it wanted to build whatever is possible. So it's going to build a three piece monolith because it's the lowest base piece of the shrines. So the Anma will gain wisdom when building that site. So to do that we're going to check the card next to it. It has not been flipped yet. Um, so the symbols on the back indicate what it gains. In this case it's going to get one wisdom which is the square symbol at the top of this board which is the temple row which pushes this up. So that's going to make the value of any of its temples greater at the end because it starts with certain value for each type of these symbols and it's trying to increase the value of each of those as it goes up is how it scores the automa we're going to move to the second part of the card it wants to remove something from a i believe it was that symbol Yep. Remove the largest unoccupied tile, including its volcanoes. Cannot remove a mountain. So the A spaces, because this says A, the largest tile is a three. Now if it was a tie, you'd start, uh, it would go with the lowest A sector, starting at one and going up to nine. So right now, three, it's the only three. So that just permanently removed. And then at the bottom it says it's also going to move up the ziggurat, so that means yellow is going to get to move up one. It can't it can't stop where someone else is, so it actually jumps the other automa to the two space. So in this case it wants um, to check the A place and build. So it's going to want to do this here and send a follower here because of the top of this action is try to build and then send a study a worker to study on it. 
if possible, in the A section, which is that where that was. And then when it builds something, it's going to gain wisdom, which it spends based on these symbols. One on the arrow, one on the monolith. Okay. That was because the shrines get two wisdom when built. And then the uh, middle is shift row two spaces and it's wanting this column one two do I got that right there we go one two and then it wants to jump go go up the ziggurat one but then it jumps because of someone else is there so my two current open action options are shift all land tiles in a row or send one to study or return up to two I did this, I did this, did that by moving that one there, and then I did send one, uh, and then next I did I can't remember which one of these removed. I'm gonna do put it on move three that one so it becomes with the two volcano. This one should have been a four with the two now. So this time it wants to the yellow automa wants to build a sacred site and the B, there's no mountain there. So if that's not possible, it wants to send a worker to study, which can do right here. Then we move on, it wants to, there's actually two rows on this, it would shift. So second and second to bottom, it's gonna shift right two spaces, nothing there. Here, one, two. And then bottom it actually has two ziggurat symbols, so it's going to go one, two. It lands on empty space, so it does not do any extra leapfrogging. Okay, second automa. This one wants to form a mountain on the lowest numbered map space containing no other land tiles in the B sector, which is currently B2 right here. That's actually going to help me out a lot since I'm next to it. And it's going to then build a sacred site on it, which is going to be this monolith. It builds a monolith, so in this instance it will gain one wisdom. Symbol is here, matches this, so it goes up one right there. And then the middle of the card, remove one from the C section, so it's going to remove the largest unoccupied land tile and C, C starts one, two, three, and so on. There's a one, one, three, right there. It's gonna move that three off the board. And then it's going to uh, two times up the ziggurat for the bottom of the card. Uh, one, two, now anytime on the ziggurat, so anybody hits a red space, you immediately add two volcanoes to every red volcanic site. I messed up a while ago. We should have added an island to this empty island space when everything shifted. No effect since nothing else happened next to it. But now we're adding two volcano to each of those red locations tiles. Now, in these two in instances, two two volcanoes make a four volcano, which the four volcano is the maximum. So you always add to the volcano already there before doing more. So now I have to decide which worker I move from which, how I do it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to uh, move this one, send one to study, move my build one from there. And then I'm going to, here's where it's fun, you can use that same worker you already moved the next action and move it again. I'm going to go back to move.
I'm going to do the erupt volcanoes. So here's where it gets interesting. If done correctly. I'm going to have to be careful how I do it. No, I don't want to erupt. I'm going to actually do... Because I was here, I sent... I'm going to do a journey to move one on the board to here. Now I'm on the mountain space. My third, I'm going to do a build one to be able to build a shrine. Build a shrine right here. And when you build anything, you immediately go on top of it. Now when I build a shrine, I get to ascend two on the ziggurat. One, two. No leapfrog going on here, unfortunately. I need to catch up to them a little bit more. But I do get to gain two wisdom. And wisdom is what I get to do to unlock more options on my action board. So it basically increases the, the ability at each of these actions. So I think what I want to do... I'm going to increase my movement by one. That allows me to get down off the mountain a little bit easier. Actually, I'm going to do it by... Increase it by two, so that gives me three movement spaces each time I journey. And that was uh, with three actions. So my turn's done. Automa. Number one. First, it wants to send and the region indicator, which it does not have a site in D, that's why. So then it tries to do this. This is full, so it's going to return instead to followers. And when it does that, it's going to gain two wisdom, which increases its stuff. So per the symbols, first one is here, second symbol here, middle action, move a row that is the third one down. Ah, uh, didn't want it to do that. I'll make do. Opens up the island space, so it will form a new island. Uh, it's actually going to do it two spaces. So one more on each of these. But the island still forms. And then the bottom is advanced up the ziggurat again, which does another weak frog. I have to be careful. I'm going to get left behind here. Okay, next on the next automa, it wants to send a worker to study over here. Okay, easy enough. Shift rows, two spaces, the second column. There's nothing there, so no action and no is a grunt movement. Thank you. Okay, first I'm going to move my worker to the send one to study or return up to two. I'm going to return my two study guys. Now, these will end up covering two action spots. Uh, let's cover the journey and erupt for now. Because I return to, I get two wisdom to spend on increasing my action spaces. Increase this by two, or increase that one by one, increase this one by one each. So now I'll be able to move rows two spaces and I can move two individual tiles instead of having them having to be three together. Then what I want to do is I'm going to move my sh uh, for my journey to shift all so this is my second action. In a row, I'm gonna shift a row two times. I'm gonna go one, two, one, two. This island goes one, two. Because remember it crosses over the board. Circumvents. And 
then I'm going to use this worker to move uh, two tiles. These two, I'm going to shove to the right, shoving a four and a four together. So the two fours make a mountain. The volcanoes stay on the mountain. The fours come off. Two fours always make a mountain. So now we have two mountains side by side. So I can travel a little bit easier and go build something else faster. So that was three actions. Back to the Automas. We've done, uh, I believe, the same amount of them. I each. Yep, four cards on each. So we're going to the fifth round. Okay, so this is going to try to build some stuff going on here. Uh, first, it's going to check the A area to where it can build. There's only one mountain in the A. It can't build on it because it already has one there. So it's going to check B. There's two mountains here. So it's going to go for the lowest numbered B sector, which is actually the mountain I just built. It builds a monolith onto that site and sends a follower to that site. And when it builds that, it's going to get wisdom based on this symbol, which is this one. It's going to attempt to shift row two spaces straight up the middle. There's something in that row, even though it's not, everything's still gonna move. It's gonna move up two spaces, one, which travels here and then two to here for that mountain. And then it does not have a ziggurat movement. So it's, that's action done. Blue Automa, it's gonna check the D region to be able to place, there's no mountain there. So then it wants to send one to study in the D region, it can't do that. So it's going to return two workers, one, two, it's gonna hit two wisdom. So it's gonna do that real quick, one, two. It's gonna advance the ziggurat, which does a leapfrog. Ha, oh, I'm getting left behind, really bad. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to send a study, pull off my build, do this, move to here uh, to either erupt or form volcanoes. I'm going to add plus three to this two volcano, making it a four and a one. Hopefully I can plan ahead on this one. Then I'm going to go move this one and go shift all land tiles in a row. Go. One, two for this row. Three actions. Back to Automa. D, it wants to build, there's no mountain, so it's going to send the fall, uh, to study. It's going to shift third section, two, one, two, down, creates a new island. Two up the ziggurat, one, two, oh, I'm so far behind. Next, Automa, it wants to build in C, it can't on that mountain. So instead it wants to send a study, it has one there, so it's going to go on its own study, shift this one, one, two, up the ziggurat, one, leap shrug, red space. So more volcanoes. This one becomes a four. That one becomes a three. Get two over here, this two becomes four. I'm going to move one to erupt. I'm going to erupt this four, flowing it sideways to here, You're creating a four tile. And then I'm going to journey with this one. One, two, three to here. I'm gonna move. I 
I'm going to erupt this four to here, creating another four. Hopefully I can create a mountain soon. Uh, on my turn, it wants to build on a mountain in the B space. It's going to have to build it here. Send a follower. It gets three wisdom for that. So it's going to go one, two, three. It wants to remove stuff from both B and D. The highest number to B is a four, so based on the it's gonna have to move that four off. I just create it. it. Sucks. And then remove from D the highest numbered. There's two and two, so it's gonna go from the light lowest number D space. And then ziggurat with another leap. No. Okay. Automa. It wants to make a mountain in the D area. The lowest number of map space containing you know, the land tile, so it's going to make a mountain here. And it wants to build as well, so that means it's going to do this. Build. It does not send a follower because it did not have a symbol. It gets one. Um, wants to remove from the A area. They're all tied, so it's going to remove this with the uh, volcano on it, but then it sends one right back out because it's continually forming islands right there. Two spaces on the zig. One, two. Look. I'm going to do a. Do this one. Uh, move land tiles once. Uh, move land tiles. One space, I can grab two together. Grab this one and this one. I'm gonna move them that way towards the mountain. So this crashes into the mountain. This does that. This becomes five on the mountain, five volcano on the mountain. And then I can do. I can journey. I'm gonna go. One, two, and then build on that by going, building this on it, which puts me on my site. I get two ascend, two wisdom, so I get to finally go up on the zero out again. Well, it looks like I'm primarily building. Uh, shrine, so I'm going to go one, two, up that level. And that was a shift. So that was three actions. Back to the Automa. Uh, searching in area B, then D, then A. It's wanting to build in the sites. So it's yellow, yellow. It does not have yellow in D. So it's going to try to build there. Of course, it gets its temple. God. Oh, but the nice thing is I'm going to get something special from it. So first we'll go over its build. Wants to send a follower onto it. It gets three wisdom for this. So it's going to go this one, this one, that one. Then it wants to shift a row to, uh, well, I get one wisdom because I'm still on my study site. So I get to increase one thing by one. I'm going to do this so I can have more on the map. Mm. Now I'm going to increase. Yeah, have more on the map. I'll show you why in a moment. So we're going to the next move on the card, which is shifting tiles in a particular row, which this card shows it's going to be this row moves it by two. So every tile in that row is going to move by two. Um, so now we're moving on to this uh, second Automa card. I need to flip one. It's wanting to attempt to build a site. So first in the D area, there's no mountains to build on currently because that mountain is full. 
So then it's going to check B. Blue already has a site on this one, but it does not have it here. So it's going to build something on that site. So it's going to build this one. It wanted to send a worker to it as well. Now, because the yellow one is there, it gains a point for being there. And then by, when it gains points, it increases on its own board based on symbols on the car previous card, or the card's still in its stack. So in this case, the symbol relates to this row over here. Now, because this one built, when it builds the, mid the middle one, it gets two points to increase its levels based on its own card symbols. So we'll do that real quick. One, two. The middle is wanting to shift this third from the bottom row to the left two spaces. I'm gonna go one, two with this one. One, two with this one. And then this one shifts all the way across one, two. I'm going to do this send one to study, which allows you to go either here or out to the board. Since I can have three on the board, I can send one of these. I'm going to send this one to this side over here. So then I erupted, I sent, and I'm going to then use this one to journey, go one, two, three to get to that site. So I can try to build next round. Okay, back to the Automa. And either D, C, or B, it wants to build uh, this being yellow. Not a mountain it can build on here. Uh, not a mountain it can build on here. It's already built everything here. So then instead it wants to return to work to worker. So it's gonna pull from D first, that one, and C, and then D starting with the lowest level. That's going to benefit me, but that's also two points it essentially gets on its board, raising this and this. And then it wants to shift two spaces, this whole middle row two to the right. It's allowed to move mountains one, two. This is going to show it moving across the board, so one to here and then two these stay adjacent one two to here and then it does nothing at the bottom of its card the next automa is in the b area of the board here it wants to build if possible it is not so it wants to send a worker out there it already has one so then it's going to instead return two one from here and one from its board getting two points on its board and then ziggurat movement uh, it's going to hit the 12 space which is red so volcanoes come out to the board starting with this one it adds a two this two is going to become a four because it adds a two to every red spot on the board this three is going to become a four plus one And then this two becomes a four. And then it's gonna move this third from the right two spaces down. One, two, one, two, new islands formed. So it's back to my turn. This is where I set myself up to build on this site by going Uh, build one I can build a temple at the top of that which gets me two on the ziggurat one two plus three wisdom points over here which I can go with uh, I get three to spin I'm gonna have that and that now it gets tricky Here, let's show it off. I'm going to move this one and one, two on that one. I'm 
what that's going to do, it's going to unlock my horizon on this board, which means I get this worker, but I immediately have to place it somewhere. I'm just going to do this because it's going to block a movement. So that was action number one. Action number two. I'm going to go send and send this guy out here because I can have three on the map, which I now have three on the map. And then move three. I'm going to move land tiles one space. I can move two that are adjacent, which means these two are adjacent because of the, the way it's orientated. So I can shift these left or around one. That's going to crash two force to create a mountain right there which will help me in a moment, and that goes right there. So hopefully I can do a journey build next turn too. So this one wants to remove a, an, all opponents from the first occupied tile in the region. There are no opponents in that region. So then instead it wants to send someone to that region to study. There's no so otherwise it's going to go study here. And then it's going to shift two spaces straight up the middle. So it's just that one tile. And then ziggurat. Next to Atama. It wants to build an A region. There's no mountains. So then it wants to send one to study in that region. It can't. So it goes here. Shift two straight up the middle. I'm okay with that again. One, two. And ziggurat. Okay, I'm going to go journey, I'm going to go one, two, three to that mountain. And then I'm going to build a monolith on that mountain, which gets me two on the ziggurat, one, two, plus one more point, or more, one more wisdom. Uh, that puts me on that though. Um, do I want to do that? Shift that one up, that one. So that was my second action. My third action is going to be. I could erupt, I could shift lands, I could send one to study, I could journey, don't want to journey. Yeah, I think I'm going to need to journey and prepare myself. Or I start doing some shifty movement here. Turn to I'm going to return this one and this one to come to my board. Cover those two so I get two points on these. The one here and the one there. That's my turn. Automa card region it wants to build it can't so it wants to send a worker it can't it wants to send a study so it's going to return to get to it's going to go here it's going to go there that's okay it's going to shift rows it's going to go second end from each side up to one two one two that's going to come off one two is going to be there 
One, two is going to be here. This one. Was it one, two here? Yep. And I can deal with that movement. Uh, two up the ziggurat for yellow. One, two. No ziggurat, please. Okay. So in the C, A, or B area, first C, it wants to build. It can't. A, it can't build. Or A, it can't build. B, it can't build. So no action. I'm okay with that. It's going to shift this third down to the left twice. And then no zero. Okay, so my first action is going to be a journey. Go one, two. And then I'm going to build a temple at the top, which first gets me two on the zig, gets me three wisdom, and go one, two, three. It's going to give blue a, a point, a wisdom point. The top is red here. Or not red, square. I probably used the wrong worker. Yeah, I shouldn't have done the journey one. I should have done that one. And then I can come off and do my send. One steady. I'm going to send that one to steady here. Micro retcon, but it, it happens sometimes when you play solo. Okay, back to the Automa. Yeah, this is going to probably end it. C region, it wants to build. C region's here. There's no mountain to build on, so it's going to send a follower if it to this location to study. And then it's going to shift the third down road uh, to left. One, two. One, two. One, two, and there. Now this is kind of interesting that all these mountains have shifted together because typically players can't move mountains, but Automa can. So it's just how the, the mountains have somehow clumped up when they were really spread out before. It's kind of interesting. Now it's going to move up one, two on the ziggurat. That hits 15, so this means it's going to be the last round, no matter what. Um, then the blue Automa card. B region, it wants to send someone, uh, build, it can't, wants to send someone there. So instead it's going to send down here. It's not full to study. Shift row two spaces, this exact middle two spaces. One, two. One, two. One, two. And one, two. Okay, and it's going to attempt to advance up the ziggurat. It cannot because it's maxed out. And it, there's nowhere else to go. Yeah, let's just do an erupt volcano for the fun of it. I'm going to take this four volcano, erupt down to this one, makes it a four tile. And that four volcano still, still has one left on it. It can move and spread out. So I could either make one around it or I could spread it to this two. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to spread it to the, to the two tile, making it a three tile instead, using the rest of the volcano. That's a three tile. And then I'm going to uh, move a worker to send one to study. I'm going to send one to study over here, one of the other ones I did not use. And then I'm going to move one of these to move land just to have fun with it. So I'm going to move these two adjacent tiles because they're adjacent to each other. And they're going to move directly down. 
not around the arrow. No, I think it does do that because this one moves down, but this one actually moves down. It shows some examples on the rule book that are really good, um, but this is the part where it can get a little confusing to understand that in theory they're both moving down, but they don't look like they're both moving down. Just because the way it's supposed to mimic a, a globe and it comes around the bottom of the board. So this three is going to move to this one, crash it, become a four. Which is easy to see because that was a direct down. Now this four trying to go down actually rotates along the linear line of the board and picks a four down here. So that's harder for some people to see. Um, it would have been kind of cool if I could have done more with it. I can't because that actually, in game, we're going to count up the points now. So what we'll actually do is, you have the points from the ziggurat, and then you have points from your boards add up, depending on what you increase and what levels you got to eat. So I'm going to start with the yellow automa, which is the competitive one, so you would expect it to score more points than the blue, which was a friendly. So yellow, first on the ziggurat, had 15. And then you go step by step. The automa is just basically the highest step it gets. It gets points at certain levels. So first it's going to get 7, then 3, then 1 uh, per follower. And I believe that symbol is supposed to be the same. Yep, per, per, per uh, follower studying. So yellow has one, two, studying. So that's two times one, that's two. Next level is straight up four. Um, then it's six and five. So adding that up, 15 plus seven, 22 plus three is 25, plus two, 27 plus four, 31, plus six, 37, plus five, 42 total. Okay, next up is blue, 14 on the ziggurat, step by step, 5, 3, 2 points per person study, uh, follower studying, that's 1, 2, and 3, because these right here count, as well, and the board, so that's 3 times 2, 6, 4, 3, and 6. Adding it up, 14 plus 5 is 19, plus 3, 22, plus 6, 28, plus 4, 32, plus 3, 30. I jumped in. Um, 19, 22, 28, 32, 35, plus 6, 41. So that's 2 automa is only one point apart, which was primarily the difference on the, uh, the ziggurat. So really, the two points apart, which was primarily the difference on the ziggurat. So really, they scored very evenly right here. So let's see how well I did compared to them. I don't feel I did as well. Scoring is a little bit different. You do check across the board, but the scoring values will pop up different because you have action spots instead of just purely scoring. So first, on the zig, I only took 10. I stayed way too low. Didn't build early enough and often enough. Now, then I go across my board row. So you can see my end state board. I'm going to go from left to right scoring it. If I'd increased this high enough, or any of these high enough, they have certain points at certain levels. Those did not, but I did hit my first horizon level, which these first five. So right now I'd get one point for each follower at a study site. So I have one plus the three on the board is four. So just four points for that. If I'd unlocked my second horizon level, so all of these at least to that next level up, I would have unlocked this next worker and two points for one study. But bear in mind, when you unlock those extra uh, follower workers, they're blocking extra spaces on your board as well. So you have to be very mindful of when you gain them, how you use them. So I only got four points for those workers. Then I come down here. I raise this level up. So I get two points per monolith I built. I built one monolith. So I only get two points for that. 
And then my next row is I get seven points per shrine I built. And I built one, two shrines. So that's 14 points. And then I brought this one up to six points per temple. And I built two temples. So that's 12 points. So then 10 plus 4 plus 2, that's 16 plus 14 is 30. So I hit 42. So I tied the, the competitive automa. So let's go see what the book says about tiebreakers. Okay, so we tie the player who ascended highest on the ziggurat wins the game. So I'll show off the box again. This is Oros from Ash Games. Uh, bear in mind that AE is a special symbol, but you can type it in as aescgames.com slash Oros. Go check it out. So it's one to four players set up about five minutes. As you can see, there's some pieces, tiles, and stuff, but it's pretty straightforward. Play time says about 30 minutes per player. Uh, played a four-player game last week. It ran about two hours, so that 30-minute time frame is right on. Recommended age 14 plus. Primarily, uh, yes, there are some small pieces, but primarily because the strategy involved is quite a lot of depth to it. There's a lot of movement, spatial things going on. And so this coming to Kickstarter July 20th, I recommend that you check it out for yourself. If it fits your play style, is something you would enjoy, fits your budget, I would recommend it. Of course, if you have any questions about it, feel free to reach out to me or reach out to Brant uh, on Facebook at his website for Ash Games. And as always, play games and spread joy.